Okay, so before anyone says anything, I am not comparing the new movie to the entirety of the Generation 4 series. That wouldn't be fair at all. What I'm doing is comparing the G4 movie, My Little Pony the movie, to the G5 pilot movie, My Little Pony A New Generation. So, we cool now? Cool. Let's chat. Hello everyone, my name's Ayla Bell, and let me start this video by saying that I'm a huge fan of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. It is, without a doubt, my favorite show above any other show. I hopped right into the show a few months before season 2 aired. MLP became my comfort show after a personally traumatic period in my life, and I admired almost everything about it. As cheesy as this sounds, it really did teach me more about friendship and how to be a good friend. They were lessons I needed to learn and aligned quite well with my faith and Christianity. Besides that, the characters are great, the style is cute, the animation only got better and better, the songs were phenomenal, the show had interesting lore, and best yet, the show has Starlight Glimmer, who is, without a doubt, my favorite character in any piece of media. By the way, the last few of my videos have had a hidden Starlight Glimmer somewhere within them. I plan on hiding a starlight in every video from now on, so look out for her. I'm saying all of this to let you know that I do in fact have a huge bias towards G4. There's no hiding it. G4 isn't perfect by any means, but there's no denying the place it has in my heart. So does that mean I'm opposed to G5 existing? No, not at all. FIM had a story to tell and that story ended mostly gracefully. Considering the past, G5 was an inevitability. However, I largely had no intentions of watching it. Due to reasons that I do not wish to elaborate on, I had a bad feeling about the direction that the next generation would go in, so I decided that I had my fun with G4 and was willing to move on. Even though the early concepts of G5 looked intriguing, I was still willing to let it go. But then, G5 came closer and closer to becoming reality. We caught glimpses of the new characters and conflict of the movie. And long story short, I was curious enough to check it out. Not only did I feel like I owed MLP the courtesy of at least giving it a chance, but I also wanted to know why the heck the plot of a new generation was allowed to happen. More about that later. Today's video is all about deciding which movie is better and why. Neither of these movies are perfect, and I'm interested in sitting down and figuring out which movie comes out on top. So, yeah. A lot of this will be my opinion as I do have my personal tastes about things, but I'll do my best to be fair. Also, before someone else says such a comment, let me say this. Unless G5 is your entryway for MLP, you can't help but compare it to G4. It's like, impossible not to. I mean, if even the writers slash creators of a new generation keep referencing FIM multiple times throughout the movie and insist on it being in the same world, then comparisons will be made. That's like saying you shouldn't compare Legend of Korra to Avatar The Last Airbender or the new Star Wars trilogy to the original trilogy or the prequel trilogy. It's the same universe with shared lore and, in some cases, shared characters. That being said, a theatrical movie, or a Netflix movie in a new generation's case because of COVID, has to be able to stand on its own without an audience having prior knowledge of a show or comics or books or whatever. Just like with the MCU movies and just like with Harry Potter. I should be able to watch the movies without having to have knowledge of the source material. So regardless of the comparisons and regardless of the connection to FIM, how do the G4 and G5 movies fare for themselves? Let's find out. The story slash plot execution. My Little Pony the movie takes place during the Festival of Friendship organized by Twilight Sparkle and her friends to help unify the ponies. But in the middle of the preparations, a villain named the Storm King sends his army to seize Canterlot. The head of its troops, Tempest Shadow, manages to incapacitate three of the Alicorn princesses. Before she has a chance to capture Twilight, the main six, and Spike, are given a chance to escape. They then go on a journey outside of Equestria to enlist the help of the Hippogriffs. Throughout their journey, they meet new friends as they're being stalked by Tempest, who is determined to capture Twilight. My Little Pony, A New Generation, takes place, presumably, thousands of years after the events of the final season of FIM. At some point, the three pony races separated and have grown prejudiced and fearful towards each other for an unknown reason. Despite this, Sunny Star Scout, an optimistic Earth Pony, grew up believing that the three races can be friends again. 
Zenny was an outcast for her beliefs, but the opportunity to change the status quo came along when a unicorn decides to visit Maritime Bay. After discovering that magic no longer exists via Izzy Moonbow, the unicorn, the duo set out on a journey to find out what happened to the magic and if bringing it back could reunite the ponies of Equestria. These two meet new friends that join them for the ride as they discover specific artifacts that could be useful for their cause. Okay, so right off the bat, the stakes are a lot higher in the G4 movie. Ponies become enslaved and the very balance of nature gets rocked as the Storm King gets the ability to harness the Alicorn Princess's powers. Whereas in the G5 movie, aside from the prejudice and segregation, the pony races seem relatively content with their way of life. Except for the unicorns who are all miserable for some reason. I mean, you can make the argument that they're miserable because they don't have magic, but presumably this generation never had magic, so why would they be upset about something they never had? I mean, the Pegasi can't fly, and yet they seem to be pretty happy with their lives. I don't know. Anyway, the worst that can happen in the G5 movie, if Sunny fails, is that the ponies don't become friends again. Which, of course, isn't great, but it's not life-threatening. I'm not saying that higher stakes automatically make something a better movie, because it doesn't, especially in this case. As hyped as I was to see the G4 movie, and as good as the setup is, it was kind of a letdown. They wanted the stakes to be so high, but the writers were unwilling to make the content of the movie match the stakes. Like, you expect some big final battle to happen, but what we get are weak sword fights, Pinkie Pie throwing cupcakes at the bad guys, and Fluttershy giving one of the bad guys therapy. Funny. It's funny, sure, but it takes away the tension that the story was trying to build. These guys are supposed to be super intimidating. I mean, magic doesn't seem to affect them, and yet they are reduced to nothing but jokes. Why are we supposed to be scared again? What happened to the stakes? But before any of that can happen, the majority of the story had this repetitive run of events that happened three times in a row. The ponies meet a new friend, they sing a song, and then they leave this new friend. They made the sequence of events boring and predictable, and there wasn't nearly enough time to devote to these new characters as would have been preferred. And then there was the famous third act breakup that so many movies have. It's not that the cliché doesn't work, it's just really unneeded in this movie, especially this movie. At the end of the day, my biggest gripe with this movie is that it couldn't be as serious as it wanted to be. I'm not saying I want a dark and gritty movie. I'm saying I was expecting something along the lines of a Disney movie. It could be lighthearted and silly, but also knew how to get real and serious. The stakes were high, and the story concept is cool, but the movie dropped the ball here. As for the G5 movie, the stakes were a lot lower, as previously stated. And in this case, that's a good thing. The movie knew what it was trying to be, a small-scaled adventure with humor and scenes that were proportional to the problem. As a Friendship is Magic fan, I take issue with the plot, but if I knew nothing about FIM, I'd say the story was solid. It's a simple story, sort of boring in concept, but executed in a way that wasn't boring. And unlike the G4 movie, there was no unnecessary and uncomfortable third act breakup. I was expecting it too, but it didn't happen, and I am so grateful for that. So, the summary of this section is that G4 had an exciting story premise, but the execution was poor, while G5 had a mundane premise, but really good execution. The first point goes to G5. The animation and style. G4 mixes 2D animation with 3D backgrounds and, at times, effects. For the most part, I thought the mix looked cool. I'm totally biased here, but I like 2D animation much more than CGI. So even with the awkward at times combination of the animation styles in the G4 movie, I like how it looks and feels a lot better than G5. With 2D, you can stretch and exaggerate characters and their expressions a lot more than you can with CG. In that regard, the CGI G5 movie's characters and their movements were a lot more realistic and toned down, less cartoony. Even the colors were toned down for the G5 movie. You know compared to the G4 one anyway. Like the colors were vibrant enough, just if you put the movies side by side, G4 is a lot more vibrant. In the G4 movie, the colors were vibrant and popped out at you, but weren't so saturated to the point of your eyes, you know, bleeding. It was just nice and colorful. Style-wise, the G4 characters were all uniquely designed. Very distinct eye shapes, main styles, and colors. Yes, the body types were all the same for the female ponies, but 
you know, tis how FIM goes. Since other creatures were included, we see unique designs for secondary and background characters alike, allowing a visually exciting experience. I always thought that the FIM character model style was cute and aesthetically pleasing, and even though the style changed slightly for the movie, giving the ponies bigger and shinier eyes with more rounded features, I think it's I think it's still a cute style. As for G5, well, let me get the positives out of the way. When I envisioned a CG MLP movie, I was expecting the worst. I thought the ponies wouldn't translate well to CG given how cartoony they look. But, for the most part, the transition worked out very well. For the most part, the movements of the ponies are very smooth and well done. I really like the texture on their coats. It reminds me of the cloth textures used in the Trolls movies. And... That's about it. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get a, quite, maybe quite a bit of flack for this, but I really, really don't like the style used for the ponies. Their faces really bother me. I at first couldn't put my finger on why, but then I realized. They look too human. It was that sense of uncanny valley where they came close to looking human but stopped short. I don't mean they look like a real world human, more like a CGI Disney human. That isn't to say that the G4 ponies look like actual ponies. They didn't, of course, but at least they didn't look like humans. When my brother looked at the poster for the G5 movie, he also thought that they looked creepy. I was so relieved that it wasn't just me thinking this. The G5 ponies look the most human whenever they open their mouths wide. Their teeth and mouth structure look superhuman, and also during Sprout's Danger Danger song. Whenever Sprout looked directly at the camera with a full front view of his head, it just doesn't look right. It's so human, but not. Does anyone else see that? Anyone besides me and my brother? Also, the faces all look the same, like even more so than G4. Also, also, the running animation in G5 feels super slow. It's like, you know they're trying to run fast, but for some reason the animation engine won't let them or something. It's hard for me to explain. There just doesn't seem to be any urgency, or rather, they didn't run like ponies. I mean, anatomically they did. It's, I don't know, it's weird. It's just so oddly slow. I just can't articulate it as well as I'd like to. I wish I could be more eloquent with that point, but I know some other people caught it too when I watched reviews of other people reviewing this movie. They just do seem a bit slow. In any case, this point of animation slash style goes to G4. The songs. Both My Little Pony the Movie and My Little Pony A New Generation are musicals, so there's plenty of songs throughout both movies. Both movies have fun songs, but one movie did better with the overall soundtrack. When in its conception, the creators behind the G4 movie made it a point to let it be known that a full orchestra would be used for the musical portions of the feature. This really gave the G4 movie an advantage over the G5 movie. Plus, Daniel Ingram was in charge of the songs, so you know, we're gonna have a good time. The songs sounded grander and like they were meant to be listened to with movie theater speakers just so that you could hear the little details within them. The percussion, the brass section, the woodwinds, the strings, it was all done quite fantastically. All of the songs in the movie also had a unique sound to them. Different music genres were integrated throughout the film, giving all the characters who sang them unique feels and adding more atmosphere to the settings and situation. These songs were cinematic. With the exception of We Got the Beat song that played at the beginning of the movie. Okay, I'm gonna rant for a second here. Did you guys know that the MLP movie was supposed to have an extended opening sequence that wasn't shown in the theatrical cut? It consisted of Twilight giving a brief overview of Alicorn Princesses and the role in Equestria, as well as the role of Twilight and her friends. It provided much needed exposition for moviegoers who didn't know who these characters were. It had pretty stained glass art as Twilight narrated, all for the happy feelings to be shattered by Tempest, whose chaotic electrical sparks broke the glass. And then we were to open the movie with a beautiful song called Equestria that was sung by a choir. You can listen to it on YouTube if you're curious. It would have set the mood for the movie so much better. But instead, the whole opening was cut and the song we got was We Got The Beat, or rather a ponified cover version of it. The moment I heard that song, I immediately had a bad feeling about the tone of the movie and how it was gonna go. 
MLP doesn't stoop to song covers and canon, so why was this allowed? Why replace a perfectly nice song? Ugh. Anyway, rant over. Ugh, stupid corporate meddling. Sorry, rant is officially over now. When I left the theater, I knew I wanted to go home and immediately listen to the songs from this movie, with the exception of We Got the Beat and Rainbow. Rainbow isn't a bad song, I just wish it wasn't the song that ended the movie. It left a bad impression on me. Yeah, I really wish Off to See the World was the finale song, and instead of being sung by Lucas Graham, who does sing it great, by the way, that song is a bop. I wish, like, the ponies had sang it. I think it would have been perfect. But anyway, yeah, this, the movie didn't end to my expectations. But anyway, I love all the songs in the movie. I immediately went home after I got done watching it in theaters to memorize Time to Be Awesome, and I still spam that song often. Honestly, most of the songs in the G4 movie are so great. I'd go through them all, but the praises will be quite similar, so I'll spare you my fangirling. G5 also has nice songs. However, with the exception of Danger Danger, which is like a rock or grunge song, all of the songs in the movie are pop songs. This isn't bad, I just missed the variety. The songs don't sound cinematic, they just sound like songs you'd listen to on a pop station on the radio. Gonna Be My Day is my favorite of the pop songs. It's very catchy and got stuck in my head for quite a while. Plus, it was nice hearing Gabriella sing after all these years. Welcome back, Wildcat. Danger Danger has to be my favorite song in the movie. Not only because it sounds the most different, but it just sounds really cool. And plus, the lyrics are silly and it knows that. Rhyming mob with Cobb and Rob isn't lazy writing, that's part of the joke. Sprout singing about how they are a brainless, irrational mob who only thinks of problems as being black and white is part of the joke. It's supposed to be on the nose. I know I don't have to explain that to everyone, as I'm sure most people understand it's meant to be silly, but I know there are people out there who took the song too seriously. I don't care for looking out for you. It's forgettable. Same for It's Alright. I don't like glowing up because I can't understand most of what Evie is singing. I'm not the only one, apparently. I watched another YouTuber react to the movie, and he couldn't understand what she was saying either. Sure, I could look up the lyrics, but I don't want to. When I listen to a song that's originally in English, I like to be able to understand what's being said without doing homework. It's a pet peeve of mine. And fit right in. I have some critiques about it, but it is overall a very good song. Very fun to listen to. Heck, it would probably be my favorite song in the movie had I not had the critiques I'll tell you about. My first problem with the song is the title. I know I wanted to keep comparisons to FIM show minimal, but I need to mention this. Uh, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic already has a song called Fit Right In. It's a song from season 9. Yes, G5's Fit Right In is a better song, like, objectively, but it bothers me that the songwriter for G5, who isn't Daniel Ingram by the way, didn't do research into the song titles that MLP had already used in FIM. This title redo wouldn't be so annoying if G5 didn't take place in the same world as G4, but it does, so it is. My second problem is that the song uses the word butts in it. As I mentioned in my first Frozen review video, I just like when songs use bodily functions in their lyrics. And while not being a bodily function, I don't like the word butt with a double T in my MLP lyrics. My third problem, Zip didn't get to sing in it, or in any songs for that matter. What's up with that? And my fourth problem, it's kind of a pointless song. Let, let's see what's happening in this scene. Izzy is setting up her non-unicorn bros with some fake horns and cloaks to hide pegasi wings so that they can be disguised as unicorns. Cool, cool. But a good chunk of the song is dedicated to this is how unicorn walks, talks, hoops, shakes their butts, etc. But like, none of the unicorns do those things that Izzy tells them that they do. With the exception of her and maybe Alphabetal, all of the unicorns are downers without any swagger. Maybe those descriptions fit the unicorns of G4, but definitely not G5. Izzy isn't setting up her friends for success, but failure. Doing the things she said would have had them stick out like a sore thumb. I mean, they end up not doing any of what she said, so it's kind of a moot point. So yeah, it's a fun song, a great song, it's just kind of weird for me, so I can't 100% get on board with it. At the end of the day, the point for songs goes to G4. 
the characters. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Neither of these movies feature Starlight Glimmer, so both get a 0 out of 10 stars. Both movies are trash. And in case there are people out there listening to this like a podcast and not watching the screen, I reassured you that I was joking. Sorta. Anyway, both movies have quite the ensemble of characters. The G4 movie has the main six, Spike, Tempest, Grubber, the Storm King, the Alcorn Princesses, Capper, the Captain Solano and her crew, Queen Novo, Princess Skystar, and Sia. I'm sorry, Sia Pony. The movie isn't that long, so we don't exactly get a lot of time with each character. I won't give the side characters too much grief in this full comparative review, and I'll extend the same courtesy for G5, mostly because this review is already running long. Let's just look at the main characters. And just as a heads up, I am not going to base the score of this section on who was my favorite character. I had already known the G4 ponies for 6 or 7 years before the movie came out, so I'm already super biased towards them. I like them more because I've known them longer and have seen their development. It wouldn't be fair to go about it this way. So this section will be based off of how useful the characters were to the plot. Let's see which movie had the most useful characters. Twilight gets the most to do and actually has an arc. She's super serious and stressed out most of the time, leading the princess of friendship to distrust anyone who isn't a pony, and even distrust her friends at some point. A lot of people said that her actions in the movie were out of character. I both agree and disagree. I'll get into why later. Rarity doesn't do anything but comment on stuff. She does show some generosity to Capper, but her role with him was going to be bigger, but the writers decided to cut it out which is a shame. It's a cute ship, though. I ship it. You can make the argument that her kindness to him made Capper regret his actions, so Rarity was sort of useful. Applejack did absolutely nothing. She just... apples, I guess. Pinkie Pie got the second most screen time of the main six, seeing how most of the group conflict was between her and Twilight. Super peppy most of the time, but serious when the situation needed her to be and she helped convince the Hippogriffs to help, so Pinky was useful. Fluttershy also did absolutely nothing. She gave therapy to one bad soldier, which amounted to nothing other than a joke. Rainbow Dash prevented the group from getting tossed off the airship. She also gave the pirate parrots their mojo back and recruited them to the good side. Rainbow also caused problems for the group by doing her rain boom, but at least she contributed to the plot. I'm looking at you, AJ and Fluttershy. Spike was also just sort of there. He tried to pep up Twilight when she was down, but it didn't help much. His fire was sort of useful in the final battle, so he at least contributed more than AJ and Fluttershy. Sorta. So, 5 out of 7 or 71% of main characters did something useful for the plot. 4 out of 7 or 57% if you don't think Rarity contributed much. Let's look at G5. Sunny as the main character gets the most to do. She is the driving force for the plot and gets things moving forward. She is truly the heart of her friend group. She doesn't really learn anything since she already knew that everyone needed to be friends. I guess she learned that friendship is magic? In any case, she was useful. Hitch, while being a great character, didn't get to do much to help Sunny. He was useful in moving the plot forward though, as he was partially responsible for Sunny and Izzy running away to find the story, and his absence in Maritime Bay led to Sprout becoming the villain. So, he did have a purpose, but his contributions were all indirect. Side note, it's a shame he didn't get to sing more. Prince Edward has a pretty good singing voice. Maybe Donut Lord will get to sing more when the show comes out, hopefully. Izzy, while being a great character, also did a lot for the plot. She's the main reason for Sunny leaving Maritime Bay to find the story, as Izzy was the one to tell Sunny about the unicorns not having magic. Izzy also created the fake crown for Queen Haven and led the group to Bridalwood to retrieve the unicorn jewel. So yes, Izzy was quite useful. Pip did nothing. Moving on. Alright, fine. Technically, Pip encouraged Sunny during the dancing contest, but like, anyone could have done that. Izzy could have easily done that. Hitch, a little less so, but Zip, probably. Izzy, most likely. I don't see Pip encouraging Sunny as the uniquely Pip. 
I wouldn't feel right giving her the point for this. I, it's, it's, I don't. And in bringing them the unicorn jewel, again, anyone could have done that. That's not a uniquely Pip thing. And yes, you can say, yes, anyone could have done that, but they didn't. It was Pip. Sure. But, I don't know. It just doesn't feel unique enough for her. I feel like if you cut her out of the movie completely, nothing would change. She has a cute design, though. Anyway, Zip is probably my favorite character next to Hitch. I fully expected her to be a Rainbow Dash knockoff, but she really isn't. Zip was useful as she was the one who broke Sunny and Izzy out of the dungeon and explained the Pegasi situation to them. She also led the group to the Pegasus Jewel and helped to retrieve it. So yes, Zip was useful. So 4 out of 5 or 80% of the characters were useful or 3 out of 5, 60% if you don't count Hitch. This point for characters used the most effectively goes to G5. The Villain the main villain of G4's movie was the Storm King, a monkey-like creature who was in control of an army of large, undefined creatures, and he was also in possession of a magic-repelling technology. He's sort of like Hades from Disney's Hercules if Hades only showed up for the last 7-10 to 10 minutes of the movie, and with slightly less charm. For most of the movie, the actual threat comes from Tempest, who we see stalking the main characters and hurting anyone who stands in her way. She's a thousand times more interesting than the Storm King in that she actually has a backstory and has a personality that we can explore. We see more of her in general, and plus she's more threatening. Tempest should have been the big bad, but because she wasn't, I have to fault the G4 movie for having a rather lame main villain. I don't even know why Tempest needed the Storm King. She could have used the staff for herself. I don't know. The main villain of G5's movie is Sprout, an earth pony who grew up with Sunny and is an insecure mama's boy who completely soaked up his mother's fear mongering to the point where when he finally got into a place of authority, he used it to create a dictatorship with the purpose of taking out the other pony races. Sprout is more interesting of a villain compared to the Storm King since we get to see his descent into madness. He's still rather incompetent and there was no point in which I actually thought his plan would work given his mech wasn't all that impressive, but he was just more entertaining to watch. Plus, he sang the best song in the movie. Point goes to G5. Who is this movie for? The G4 movie was made for fans of Friendship is Magic. Given the lack of lore introduction and very minimal character introduction, the movie was made for those who already knew this world, how it worked, and who the characters were. This movie is terrible for casual moviegoers who never watched FIM because the movie explains nothing for them, especially with that intro cut out. Oh, that was such a terrible idea. Why would they cut out that intro? Anyway, although when you think about it, you could make the argument that the movie sort of failed at being for fans as well. Again, we'll get into why later. The G5 movie had completely new characters that hadn't been established anywhere before, and because of the reset from G4, the locations and world rules were new. Because of this, the world got some introduction and all the characters got full introductions. More or less. They had, they had to because there was no established story of them beforehand. Therefore, the movie is great for casual moviegoers slash newcomers to MLP. Is the movie good for previous MLP fans? Yes and no. Yes, because if you've missed Pony ever since FIM ended, then you'll enjoy seeing Pony again in a world you're familiar with. The easter eggs and references are fun to point out. No, because if you're a fan of FIM, then there's a good chance that some of you take issue to all of the hard work of the characters from G4 being undone just to make the G5 plot happen. This point is kind of hard to score as both movies had problems appealing to both audiences. But, in general, I'm hearing more positive things about the G5 movie than the G4 movie from both audiences, so I guess I'll give the point to G5. Faithfulness to FIM's continuity. Yeah, yeah, I, okay, I know I said I would leave the series out of it, but I can't help it. And for the record, both movies have issues when it comes to this category. The G4 movie takes place after Season 7 of FIM, and this causes problems. The movie, I heard, was originally supposed to take place after season 4, which would have made a lot more sense given the events of the movie. Here's why I said earlier that Twilight's actions both made sense and didn't make sense. 
After season four, she had just been deemed the princess of friendship, so it would make more sense as to why she's so anxious about doing a good job at it and why she's so stressed out. Also, season four Twilight is much more likely to make the mistakes she made in the movie compared to season seven Twilight, who was comparatively more mature and wouldn't have made that mistake. Season 4 Twilight not knowing that she didn't have to do things on her own and can count on her friends for help makes more sense than it coming from Season 7 Twilight. And I know I joked about this earlier, but it really doesn't make any sense for Starlight Glimmer to not have a bigger role in the movie. By the time Season 7 ended, Starlight was a very prominent member of the group and very useful at that. She's super loyal to Twilight and is very magically capable. Some would even say more magically capable than Twilight. So, you're telling me that she wouldn't put up a fight during the Siege of Canterlot? She was there, we saw her, see her right there, but she didn't do anything? Even if the bad guys had a way to counter magic, Starlight would have thought of something clever. Even if she ended up failing, we still should have seen her fight. In fact, it would have made more sense for Starlight to sacrifice herself and give the main six time to escape rather than have Derpy turn to stone. Oh, and by the way, for those who don't know, the one who yelled out TWILIGHT when Twilight was about to get turned to stone was Rainbow Dash, not Derpy. You could make the argument that Derpy may have been running towards Twilight to protect her, maybe, or, you know, she just got confused in the confusion of bad guys attacking Canterlot, but she didn't have any voice lines. It was Rainbow speaking as Rainbow swooped in to save Twilight. In any case, Starlight was done dirty and it made no sense story-wise to not include her. Now, had the movie taken place after season 4 like it was originally supposed to, then Starlight not being there would make more sense considering Starlight didn't get introduced until season 5 and not reformed until the end of season 5. In fact, where was Discord? Season 7 Fluttershy would have invited him to the festival. You're telling me that Discord would allow his Fluttershy to be harmed? He'd allow her home to be taken over. I don't think so. I mean, it's hard to believe that Season 4 Discord would let Fluttershy be put in danger, but Season 7 Discord absolutely would not. He would have sent all of the Storm Army to a different dimension. What about the dragons? Where were they? Are you saying that the dragons didn't notice the chaos happening in Equestria? That Ember wouldn't leap at the opportunity to help Spike? I mean, you can make the argument that none of the dragons cared except for Ember and thus none of them felt the need to report it. But what about the changelings? Why didn't they help? And what about the pillars? Are you telling me they weren't invited to the Friendship Festival? I'm sure they'd help if they could. Also, who the heck are the Hippogriffs? If their queen is such good friends with Celestia, why haven't we heard about them before? How are they such good friends that Celestia would think of them before enlisting Discord, the Pillars, the Dragons, or the Changelings who are all arguably geographically closer than the Hippogriffs? It doesn't make sense for this movie to happen after Season 7. After Season 4 would have made more sense. Also, the magic was heavily nerfed in this movie. FIM showed us many different types of spells, and the only thing we see in the Battle for Cancer Lot is a protective barrier from Cadence and a single laser beam from Twilight. How the heck did Twilight Teleportation Sparkle never think of teleporting around to confuse them? Plus, she knows other spells. Both her and Starlight know a whole bunch of spells. If a direct attack didn't work, try something else. I know Starlight would have. Also, where's Shining Armor? In no version of the story does it make sense for him not to be in the movie. Flurry Heart not being there makes no sense either. These are the reasons why I said earlier that the G4 movie isn't completely for fans. It leaves a lot of logic out the door, allowing way too much to not make sense. Oh, but wait! I see you trying to escape, G5. You aren't excused from this either. We spent 9-10 to 10 years with FIM trying to bring together all the ponies and all the non-pony creatures, and we finally reached the pinnacle of harmony by the end of Season 9. How the heck did all of that hard work get undone? All of that hard work just... just down the drain. I've heard, I've heard some people make the argument about how realistic it is for societies to revert like this over time. After all, influential leaders die and people forget the important lessons learned in the past. And while, yes, this is realistically true, that's not something you want to see in a story. Especially when 9-10 to 10 years of hard work goes into setting a goal and that goal getting undone. Twilight and Friends' hard work that we've seen over 200 episodes of was essentially forgotten in-universe and made pointless. 
It's like watching someone make the dangerous climb up Mount Everest only for them to accidentally trip and fall when they get to the top before he got the chance to place his flag and tumble back down to the bottom of the mountain. I just wasted my time watching him climb because now he has to do it all over again so that he can get his flag up there. It's a heartbreaking waste of time. And do we get a good explanation as to why the events of FIM were undone? Nope. Some people say that the G5 movie doesn't need to expand on the lore and why the races are separated because it'll take a lot of boring exposition and time to tell that the movie didn't have. Surely, the parts that were left out will be elaborated on in the show. And while I have no doubt that this is the case, I don't agree with the sentiment. Like I mentioned earlier, a theatrically released movie has to be able to stand on its own without the moviegoers having to do homework. Yeah, G5 came out on Netflix, but that's only because of the pandemic. It was supposed to be a theatrical release. Even if you disregard that sentiment, it's okay to give some exposition. Show us a glimmer of something. I mean, wait for the series proper to go into the details, but you can give a general overview of what happened that pulled the races apart. If Katara in Avatar The Last Airbender can give a 30 second recap of the Fire Nation ruining the harmony of the world at the start of each episode, then the G5 movie can give a 30 second explanation as to what happened. And just like in Avatar, you can have a plot relevant episode when the series comes out that dives into specific details. <sighs> And now that that's out of the way, here are some specific questions. If there's no magic in the world, then how can ponies have cutie marks? We've seen at FIM that when magic is taken away, cutie marks disappear. Why are cutie marks only on one side of the flank? If that's contributing to the lack of magic, then shouldn't the magic returning put the mark on both sides? What happened to the alicorns? How are the sun and moon moving on their own? How is the weather acting on its own? How do all the Pegasi magically know how to fly? We've seen in FIM that flying takes practice. What happened to all the equestrian cities and towns from FIM? Are they all just ancient ruins? Magic wasn't powered by friendship before, why is it powered by friendship now? I mean, yes, friendship is magic, but in the past, friendship wasn't needed to make magic. Where are all of the non-pony allies? See, all of these questions I can wait to have answered in the series. I just had to get the stuff off my chest. I didn't expect all of these specific questions to get answered. The movie surely would have been a boring exposition dump. My main concern with G5 is not giving an explanation as to why the pony race is separated and why the friendship was gone. By the way, I'm not questioning the lack of Wendigos because Mad Munchkin made the argument that because the pony races were afraid of each other and not hating each other, the Wendigos didn't show up. I'm willing to accept that explanation for now. Neither the G4 nor G5 movie gets a point for this. They both do a bad job with FIM continuity. Final verdict. Well, let's tally up the points. My Little Pony the movie did better with songs and animation slash style, while My Little Pony A New Generation did better with all the other categories. So as much as I love Friendship is Magic, A New Generation had a better movie. So it does make sense why the score is better on Rotten Tomatoes for G5 compared to G4. The movies anyway. The series is yet to be seen. Before I wrap things up, I have some general thoughts about a new generation that I couldn't fit in the other categories. I wish we saw how the other unicorns reacted to Izzy. Her personality is so different from all the other unicorns that it's weird we couldn't see them interact with each other. We get the sense that Izzy was really alone growing up, similarly to Sunny. However, we got to see how the other Earth ponies treated Sunny. We didn't get to see the same with Izzy and the unicorns. Actually, show us her loneliness and her awareness of how different she is. Do the other unicorns like Izzy and just can't match her energy, similarly to Pinkie Pie and her family? Or do they think something is wrong with her like the ponies of Maritime Bay do with Sunny? On a different topic, there was no point in Sunny having her book taken away by the Pegasi guards at Zephyr Heights. No other pony, not even the queen, read it or gained valuable information from it. Sunny was given the book back like a minute later. If Queen Haven wanted to get rid of it, wouldn't it have been a more interesting plot point if she had destroyed it or threw it away in a place that's hard to get to? That way Sunny could be upset about it for longer and there'd be actual drama about losing it. I don't know. There was just no point in her losing it. Zip didn't need the book to come visit them. She would have done that regardless. Was the book only taken for that sneaky joke between Zip and Izzy? And speaking of Queen Haven, how did she escape the Pegasi guards? It's unbelievable that she got so far without getting caught again. It also bothered me a bit how it was a bit too easy for them to find the unicorn crystal. It was in the first place they looked. That's 
kind of boring. And Sunny was only able to find the Earth Pony crystal by chance. Had she not been in her room at that time of day, she wouldn't have found it. Speaking of the unicorn crystal, during the exchange and banters between Alpha Biddle and Sunny, you know, after Sunny says, I think you'll find I'm average height. There was a weird pause where no one spoke, as if the movie was expecting the audience to laugh. It was quite awkward. And lastly, I don't like that the new generation is a continuation of G4. I also didn't like the old concept of G5 where it would be new versions of the G4 characters. Like, just let G4 have its space. It and its characters and lore are its own thing. Start something new. The new generation of My Little Pony would have been best with new characters, new lore, and a new concept. Not new concept old characters, as from the leaks, or old concept with new characters, what we have now. But alas, it is what it is. I guess we'll see what comes of it. Will I watch the G5 series when it comes out? I haven't fully decided yet. My initial reasons as to why I didn't want to watch this movie are still there, and once again, I don't want to elaborate on them. I still have my worries for how the new series will go, and I'm also wary of the animation style. I'm super picky when it comes to the things I watch. One of the criteria for shows I watch is that it has to be visually appealing to me. The style for the G5 movie is super unappealing to me, so I'm not sure. I guess only the Lord knows if I will watch it or not. Anyway, I've been speaking for an awful long time. What do you guys think of the new generation of Pony? Are you looking forward to the series, or are you done with Pony for now? Comment below and let's get this conversation started. As for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more.